This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. One third of information security jobs require a cybersecurity certification. While organizations are hungry for cybersecurity talent, the cyber skills gap grows daily. The average salary for cybersecurity specialists is $116,000. ACI Learning's programs can get you certified. To maintain your competitive edge across audit, IT, and cybersecurity readiness, visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. Uh, Apple, of course, had said that they were going to be bringing or it was going to be bringing a savings account um, to its sort of financial offerings. And that has now officially launched as of uh, yesterday. We record the show on Tuesday, April 18th. This was on April 17th. So Monday, um, the savings account is now available. It has a 4.15% uh, APY and it is linked to one's Apple card. So Jason, it's not that I, as a person who doesn't have an Apple card, could just go, I'm going to start shaving my money with Apple. Yeah, that's also you said shaving there, which is weird, but uh, it was a voice. I get it. I get it. It was a bit. Yeah, this is for Apple Card customers only, at least for now. It's an interesting test case. And what they're really doing is Apple Card gives you cash back um, on purchases. And that's that's, you know, like many cards do. But the way that Apple Card does it is it puts it into Apple Cash, which are, is available in. Is it some countries now? It's it, it's not just the U.S. Is it anyway? It's Apple Cash. Um, like you can send to other people. And so what this does is essentially give you the option of turning this on and then your money doesn't go into Apple Cash. It goes into this bank account, essentially, run by Goldman Sachs, who runs the Apple Card. And, and so basically it is... If you're like me, you occasionally just transfer, oh, I've got $300 in Apple Cash. I'm going to transfer that back to my bank. I think the idea here is to encourage you to leave it where it is because it's in the wallet app. It's accessible. You can pay from it any anytime you like, but you're earning what is for a savings account a very good interest rate. So I think it's Apple, you know, toying with this idea of having an Apple bank account using Apple cash for Apple card members as the way to do it and then give you an inducement to stay there. Um, and I had somebody email me yesterday who said, well, why wouldn't I just transfer <laughs> transfer lots of money from my bank account in there? Cause it's earning a, a better rate. And you could do that. I, I am not a giver of financial advice, but I, I think it is an interesting, uh, it, I would say a toe in the water for Apple, right? Which is like, what if, because the Apple Cash itself is like this weird um, nether zone, like a limbo land, like just like your PayPal balance, which is like, well, it's yeah. my money, but they get to keep it and do whatever they want with it until I take it from them. And this is more like, okay, we'll put it in a bank account for you. And I, I think that there's something actually a little reassuring about that. So, I mean, it's an interesting test case for them. Yeah. And, and it was interesting to look at the uh, at the interest rate, 4.15 percent, which isn't a, necessarily a world beater. But if you if you limit uh, save if you limit your examination to just uh, like credit unions and savings accounts with uh, yields that don't absolutely stink, it's actually very competitive. Uh, because like my my bank gives three point nine. There's another credit union that does four point four with a minimum balance. There's no minimum balance here. Um, I've, I've been reading the financial <laughs> like, just let's just like you, Jason, like I'm not a financial person. So I've been reading like what, the, what what do the financial analysts have to say about it? And they're basically giving it pretty much a thumbs up and much for the reasons that you're giving them. Uh, you, you were giving everybody that it's a way for Apple to keep your money in the encourage you to keep the money in the ecosystem using a technique that they're not used to doing by actually giving you something in return as opposed to locking you in and making it very, very expensive for you to leave. Now, this is sort of uh, a different uh, aspect from we talked before about Apple's uh, entry into the buy now, pay later game, the buy now, pay later space. And we continue to see Apple, as you mentioned, Jason, sort of dip their toe into uh, all of these aspects of, of financing. Um, is there anything left? What what do we have after savings account, buy now, pay later, credit card, uh, and then the sort of Apple cash 
limbo that can also, I mean, we know that with Apple Cash, if you've got a family account, then you can uh, give different people um, different amounts of money regularly. So you can have a, a kid that sort of gets their, I guess, allowance through Apple Cash. So it seems like they've covered a lot of the bases. Is there anything left in financing that Apple or financial uh, stuff that Apple would want to do? Uh, I mean, on one level, what I want to say is anything uh, that they can. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> part of, yeah. I think I think actually Apple's biggest challenge in this area, I mean, they are trying to spin up their own thing. This is all through Goldman Sachs. And you know, at least based on Mark Gurman's reports at Bloomberg, they really want to create their own financial services and run this all themselves. I think uh -huh. that being forced to have a financial partner, it's a, it's an age old story, right? Which is they want to enter a field and disrupt it, but that field's got pesky regulations. And <laughs> so you end up going with a partner who's already gone through it all. And for Goldman Sachs, this is actually a weird kind of outlier to their core business. And I've definitely seen during all of these various sort of banking instabilities the last few months, people wondering if Goldman Sachs actually wants to be in this business, and not just Apple specifically, but sort of like retail banking at, at this level in general. Like, I think Apple would prefer to do it all themselves, but they found it hard. And look no further than the fact that a lot of Apple's financial services are still not available outside the U.S. or in very limited number of countries so i think that it, it, owning it themselves is a big frontier for them and i think on top of that it's getting it worldwide which you know they have to go through the banking regulations or get a new partner in every single place and then tie it in with their software because they've got all this custom software like the wallet app we forget it's not just let's make a deal with some bank in in uh, new zealand or something it's like well no it has to be wired in somehow to get back to the wallet app because that's where the ui is for everything so i I think that's my guess is it's same old story with Apple. It's going to be world domination and doing it all themselves. <laughs> hmm. Go. Now, I'm curious, uh, do any of you, uh, if you care to share, use any of Apple's, whether it be the Apple card and now this the savings account? Uh, because one of the things that Apple regularly touts and they, they bring it up in this uh, newsroom piece is, uh, quote, the new savings account from Goldman Sachs builds upon the financial health benefits that Apple Card already offers. And financial health, financial health, financial health seems to be this through phrase that they're using in everything. And so I am curious because I, I don't have any of these uh, these accounts. Do you feel like there is a true focus on financial health with the offerings that Apple Card and surrounding products have that you're not finding from other credit cards you may have had over time or other financial products you may have had over time? No, I, I, I don't think so. I think that the one of the most important parts of this product is the card itself. They've made a really, really cool card that you kind of want to have. And if you have the kind of credit where you can just ask for a card and get it. Yeah, it's a fun other thing to have in your wallet. It's great to have that kind of integration into Apple Wallet, but it's not, um, I, I wouldn't say that it's like uh, the way that the iPhone changed the relationship between the phone and the carrier uh, and basically dropping all the limits of, a, of, of an institution that was not ready to, uh, to, uh, to handle people's needs in the 21st century. I don't think they're changing banking that way. Um, I don't think that there's a really, I don't think there's any kind of a social uh, positive element to this. Not that there has to be, but it really is, I think, at this stage, Apple deciding here's something we can do that will enhance Apple products, i.e. The, the iPhone and Apple Wallet. Uh, won't cost us anything. It will make, it'll tie people closer to our brand and it's very low risk. And it's because we're partnering with Gold, Goldman Sachs, we won't go to jail, at least in the first, first five to 10 years as we spin this up. Um, I mean, this, this is, this is why, like, as with anything else, I mean, people are likely to, I, I think that people have a trust relationship with Apple such that they would try, they would be interested in getting a card with Apple that they may not necessarily be interested in getting with another institution, even though you still have to read through that entire PDF. You still have to make sure that you read through and you say, you have to see if to, to uh, that you're bound, you're bound by an arbitration clause with Goldman Sachs uh, for any disputes. And so to opt out of that, you have to send an iMessage and you won't figure that out, figure that out unless you of course read the, read all the documents, which maybe you're not going to do because it's so frictionless to simply click a button and maybe get this cool new Apple product, i.e. this nice, this nice thing, this, this nice piece of metal with the technology inside it for your wallet. The Christopher, one thing, oh, yes. Oh, thank you. I was oh, going to yeah. ask if you had any thoughts. <laughs> uh, so I, I do have an Apple card and I mostly use it for business stuff like, hey, buying a new 
whatever Apple thing to review just because you get the 3% back and it's easy to separate from my personal credit card and stuff like that. Uh, the one thing I will say that I think it does really well, the wallet app does, is when you go to pay it, if you, it shows like, hey, you can pay the minimum and it's gonna, you're gonna end up owing this much in interest or you can pay a little bit more and you'll pay a little less in interest. And my other credit card, my personal credit card doesn't do any of that. It's just like pay the minimum or pay whatever you want or whatever. You can pay it off. Uh, and, and at least in the wallet app, I will say it, it does a nice job, say, kind of showing you like, hey, the more you pay, the less interest you have, which seems like a no brainer. But when I was a lot younger, uh, I made some mistakes <laughs> with credit cards that mm -hmm. I should not have made. Uh, and I ended up really paying for it for a long time because of that, because I didn't understand what a credit card was. So. I, I don't know if it's it's not perfect by any means, um, but it, it at least does a good job at explaining like, hey, pay a little bit more and you'll actually pay a little less in the long run if you can kind of thing. Yeah, I think yeah. it's the financial equivalent of when we talk about streaming and we talk about how like Amazon and Apple are not playing the same game as the entertainment companies because they're looking at a big picture with their ecosystem. It feels a little like that for financial stuff, which is they want you as an Apple customer at the heart of their platform and their ecosystem and financial is part of that but they they want you to they want you to view them as a trustworthy partner right and so they you you don't get that sense of like eh, they're gonna really take me for a ride here because they <laughs> they have bigger things in mind right like they want, they want a long relationship with you and that does show i mean they i think I don't think all banks are this way, but I think that the financial industry in general, you know, is not necessarily worried about your financial health at the level that Apple is because it's not the only business Apple is in. Apple doesn't need to make all of its profit on this credit card that it's got. And I also have an Apple card. Um, and, and, you know, when you buy a lot of Apple stuff, it really just for the cash back, it's actually a pretty good deal. <laughs> yep. And so, and I buy uh, get, look, I buy a lot of Apple stuff. So, uh, yeah. So I, I think that that's, that's an area where, where they do differentiate themselves a little bit is because they're not playing the same game. They're not getting all their money from the financial sector. It's just one piece of a much larger puzzle. And so they can afford to think big picture when a lot of their competitors in that space are not. Mm -hmm.